but I don't think it's going to go across. All right, but it might be able to if you do it diagonally. Store owner Atim Otan plays a small role in U.S.-African trade, but both her stores in Brooklyn and in Nigeria offer a Main Street view of the slump in U.S.-African trade. I think that um, everybody's talking about recession. Uh, this is out of, uh, out of Nigeria, but it's using a Ghanaian piece. The Nigerian businesswoman has noticed higher quality imports are not being snapped up anymore. We used to sell particular products at a price point of uh, $40, primarily out of a jewelry. We went down to about a $25 price point, averagely, in terms of our sales. I'm not a good drummer. But Wayne Kiltz has been drumming up business for the past 10 years as one of the largest suppliers of African goods to U.S. retailers. His company, Africa Imports, does about $3 million a year in catalog and web sales. This is one of the most popular items that we sell is this, is this mud cloth fabric. Each piece of mud cloth is individually handmade. They're all about this size. This is the size of a, a lapa or a wrap skirt is, is what it would be used for. His business grew 5% last year, much slower than the triple digit growth of previous years. Because of the products that we sell, I don't think we're as affected as much as, as maybe I don't know, auto industry or home improvements or something like that. We have less expensive items that, that people still want to have. The price for the Cuba cloth is $100. Still, the economy has taken a toll on some of his clients. It's hurt some people. We've, um, there's been stores that have gone out of business. There's been uh, people who have, have stopped doing this. New York's famed Harlem community, home to many African immigrants, has been hit hard. Harlem business organizations say 35% of the community's small businesses have closed in the last year, including many stores. And in the area of Harlem known as Little Senegal, concern for the health of African trade goes beyond the cash register. Every time that we sell a piece of mud cloth, there's someone in Africa that gets to work for two to three weeks. It's not a lot of money by our standards, but it supports somebody for a long time in Africa. I'm Ford. Wayne Kiltz buys some of his goods from this man, Muki Kamara, originally from Gambia. Muki is the middleman. He's been buying and selling for over a decade, mostly importing black soap, cocoa, and butter. He puts the go in go-between. I travel all over the United States. Yesterday I went to Baltimore. I supply some black soap and some shea butter. So tonight I'm going to Detroit, Michigan, and supply 18,000 pounds. A guy needs shea butter. Oh, okay, just dashikis. Yeah, just so how much are the dashikis? And Muki's hustling to ride out this downturn. Back in the day, business was very good. The economy was very good. Everybody was happy. Any little things you bring, you sell it right away. But nowadays, you have to know where to go to survive. If you don't know, you can survive. And you're surviving? I'm surviving, thanks God. Things move across the borders, the borders and they use whatever they can use. These days, all players in the U.S.-African trade game could use some more customers. Richard Roth, CNN, New York.